Josh Richardson, left side of the floor. Lucas, three, it's a ring. You could say that the NBA is in a transitional stage. The superstars who have been the face of the league for the past decade are reaching the final stages of their careers, and while their performance may still be spectacular in many cases, they'll be out of the league in a few seasons from now. This is the case for players like LeBron James, Stephen Curry, Kevin Durant, James Harden, Jimmy Butler, Kawhi Leonard, or even Paul George. And that means a new generation of superstars will replace the current guard in a relatively unpredictable way. But not all players are capable of taking on such responsibility. In fact, the list of talent who can aspire to it is very short, and one way to prove it is to look at the MVP races for the past few seasons. The MVP is the golden ticket to get into the Hall of Fame, and has been for the entire history of the NBA. So, it's not an easy award to win for any player, and on many occasions, it creates great debate as to who deserves it. Really, how many players who have not won the MVP yet can aspire to win this award at this point in their careers? Boston Celtics superstar Jason Tatum is one of them, or Devin Booker, who will also have a supporting cast at his disposal this year to have a historic season with the Phoenix Suns after the trade for Bradley Beal. Or perhaps Shea Gilgis Alexander, who's shown over the past season his ability to lead the Oklahoma City Thunder. There are several realistic and sensible options, who with the condition of having a career year and elevating their game as they've not yet achieved during their career, could be crowned as MVPs of the 2023-2024 season. But there's a strange case, a player who's already at that absolute superstar level, and yet has not managed to turn his team into a real contender. Any of these past few seasons from Luka Doncic from a statistical standpoint would have been good enough to give him the regular season MVP award, and yet, really, he's never come even close. The Slovenian has now played five full seasons in the NBA, with a total of 330 games in the process, and his career averages are simply incredible. 27.6 points, 8.6 rebounds, and 8 assists per game. Career averages that no player has been able to do in the entire history of the league. But it doesn't stop there. This past season, in which the Dallas Mavericks were not even able to qualify even for the play-in, Doncic averaged 32.4 points per game. But with his team's record, his name was not even in the conversation for an MVP that was primarily a three-headed race between Joel Embiid, Nikola Jokic, and Giannis Antetokounmpo once again. We say once again because between these three international players, they've won the last five regular season MVP awards. But after the Cameroonian received his and had another disappointment in the playoffs, it's to be expected that his performance will not be as high as last season to manage his workload in preparation for the postseason. Therefore, Luka Doncic will have a golden opportunity this time. Doncic pulls up, three-pointer, bang, bang, it's good! There aren't many things where the Slovenian can improve technically, but where he has a lot of room for improvement is his athleticism. It's funny because Doncic is one of the players with the least striking physique in the NBA. He's not the most agile guard, nor the quickest, nor the most explosive, nor does he have great leaping ability. In fact, the one athletic attribute in which he's above almost every guard in the league is his strength. But despite all those shortcomings, Luka's always been talented enough to become a true superstar. But it's clear that if he worked on his body, he could be even more unstoppable. And he's the first to know it. But just in case, the Mavs reminded him. The World Cup was the perfect excuse. Doncic is that type of European player who puts his national team first at all costs. After choosing to play for Slovenia, his native country, instead of Spain, the country where he developed his skills, or Serbia where his father's family descends from, Doncic has tried to always be available for Slovenia's call. And this competition that has just ended was not going to be an exception. So, taking advantage of the free time he had to finish the season early, he set to work to transform his body to face the long months ahead. Luka arrived at the World Cup in top form, but Slovenia didn't have the best talent around him, so he had to put the team on his back, similar to what he's done in the NBA. Literally speaking, Doncic averaged 27 points, 7 rebounds, and 7 assists per game, and he managed to qualify his country for the quarterfinals, where he lost to a Canadian team that would eventually go on to win a bronze medal. But the worst news for Doncic may not have been the elimination of his team. So currently, the Slovenian situation is a bit up in the air. Individually, Doncic is in good shape. The player is still just as effective at all levels, in the NBA or in FIBA. 
a lethal scorer who's also capable of running the offense on his own, and who can go out and compete with anyone in a way that's somewhat reminiscent of LeBron James. But this injury may condition him over the course of a season that, at best, will be a long one for the Dallas Mavericks. Team-wise, however, there was also a lot of uncertainty surrounding Mark Cuban's franchise. When Kyrie was traded to Dallas last season, he only had a few months left on his contract. To make matters worse, many rumors suggested that the Texas city was not exactly his favorite destination, and that he actually wanted to have been traded to the Los Angeles Lakers to reunite with LeBron James. Well, definitely disappointing. I can't sit here and say I'm not. My focus is here, so unfortunately, Lakers, they're doing what they're doing, and that's, that's it. But surprisingly, and even more so after last year's disappointment, Kyrie signed a three-year, $120 million contract with the Mavs shortly after the start of free agency. So after a summer where Jason Kidd has had time to figure out what the team's offensive and defensive system is going to look like, the chemistry and adjustments should be much better. But in addition to Kyrie, there was another transaction of paramount importance to the Mavericks. On July 12th, just days after Irving's renewal, Dallas finalized the trade in which it acquired the services of Grant Williams in exchange for Reggie Bullock, two second rounders, and a very distant first rounder. Once again, Cuban gambled the future of the franchise in exchange for the present. Because he knows that Doncic's happiness is very important, and the Mavericks project is nothing without him. Defense was one of the biggest problems during the past year for Dallas, even more so when in acquiring Kyrie they had to trade Dorian Finney-Smith. So Grant Williams comes to be that defensive anchor on a team that doesn't exactly have the best specialists on that side of the court, a necessary profile for a team that needs some toughness. So two things can really happen. Best case scenario, Doncic manages to stay healthy during the season, develops chemistry with Kyrie Irving, the team's defense manages to be good enough to not weigh down the team's incredible offensive potential, and the Mavericks have a good season, including a good showing in the playoffs, or worst case scenario, Doncic struggles with a leg injury, or he fails to develop his chemistry with Kyrie Irving, or the team's defense, even with Grant Williams, is still lacking what is necessary to be competitive. Really, any of these three options could drag the Mavericks into a bad season, but that's the reality of the increasingly complicated West. Because at the end of the day, there are 30 teams in the NBA, and only one wins. Even if Doncic is the only NBA player who has yet to win an MVP but has performed like one, he can still elevate his performance further. We're not talking about a star. We're talking about a point forward who's ended up playing guard and since his rookie season has shown potential to be a generational player. He's only 24 years old and his resume is simply incredible. Rookie of the year, four-time All-Star, and four-time All-NBA first team. A candidate to take the baton that LeBron James picked up from Kobe Bryant and that the Mamba in turn picked up from Jordan. However, he's not yet been able to elevate his team as those incredible legends. 